presidential run. I grew up in a small rural town and we took care of each other. It was neighbors taking care of neighbors. And there was just something simple about it. And there was just something that was, that was good. You genuinely wanted to take care of people. Mm -hmm. And we've lost that. I mean, right now you see hatred, you see division, you see anger. I mean, you see these things where they're trying. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, my God, please stop. So let me explain to y'all what happens there. This is the perfect example of the Republican Party. Long ago, we lived in simpler times. We lived in a time where everybody got along. Things were great. We weren't fighting each other. We weren't mad. We weren't upset. Nikki. Your daddy couldn't get a job because he was Indian and was only hired at the HBCU. Your mama, white folks wouldn't buy her dresses. Black women did. But do y'all see how she's trying to play this? Things now, we're just so, we're so divided. Um, if you ask most people, they're not fighting with their neighbors. What the hell is she talking about? But this is how they try to frame this thing. Oh, the world today is falling apart. If only we could go back to how it used to be. You mean like Jim Crow? I'm good. I'm good. I can bypass Jim Crow. Hit play. Undercut people and it's just, you know, it was exacerbated after COVID. But it's all the more reason why we need to go back and say, wait a minute. Stop taking all this so personally. This isn't personal. This is just about getting our country back on track. A swatting is personal, though. If I call somebody's oh. house, if I say, hey, this is going down at this house, that was personal. Well, I mean, it's personal from a political perspective. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it's a blood sport to, to run for office these days. But yeah, I mean, that's it is. But it, it goes to show why. And it's why I'm so determined to finish this yeah. is because I know America's better than this. But do you lose the love for it, right? You, you just told us some of the reasons why you want to do this, right? And then you talk about some of the, the sides that are against that, right? You want to do it because you said you want to help people. You want to be the person that, you know, what you grew up on and what you wanted to see. But then you talk about them swatting your house, which is making your life miserable and your parents' life. Your parents could have had a heart attack, you mm -hmm. know? Then you talk about Donald Trump attacking you the way that he's attacking you. I mean, they dive into your personal life. They dive into an alleged affair. They dive into anything that you've ever done or allegedly have ever done into your life. And it's when does it get to the point you'd be like, excuse me, part of my friends, but fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, I mean, it's all lies. But what they don't realize is politics is the art of distraction. The more they do that, the more motivated I get. Because it's everything that's wrong with politics. Mm -hmm. It's everything that's wrong in this country that we have to clean up. So I do this. I'll take the pain. I'll take whatever it is. I'm a tough girl. I can handle it. Okay. This All right. Enough of that. I mean, that's just her just rambling. All right. So um, Charlamagne asked her about racism. Here's what she said politicians, Democrat and Republican, because we've all heard, we've heard you say America's never been a racist country. We've heard the vice president say that before. We've heard OG Jim Clyburn say that before. We've heard Tim Scott say that before. Why can't Democrats and Republicans just be honest and tell people, hey, we can't have honest conversations about racism in this country because it's not a good electoral strategy. I mean, that's not why. I'd do that's, it. that's why. No, that's why I, everybody does. It. I have talked about, look, I have talked about racism as it affected me and how we need to get past it. I mean, keep it. You, you can't talk about it and say America's never been a racist. You can't say America's never been a racist country, but then talk about the racism you experienced. There is racism in our country. Mm -hmm. I don't think that our country was founded to be racist. I don't. You don't create a constitution that says all men are created equal, but that did not have women's rights in it. You, you don't create a country where women couldn't vote. You don't create a country that was set up for white male landowners. You don't create a country where black people were slaves, white people were indentured servants. You don't create a country where you have 
go please go read the book Dark Bargain, where they talked about the battle over how do you include people of African descent who were slaves, and that's how they got to the three-fifth comp compromise because the South wanted to include them for population reasons, and the North didn't want to include them for population reasons. It came down to control or money. That was literally the creation of the country. The first slaves came here in 1619. So let's not act like a hundred years went by and oh my God, that was no racism here. How many Native Americans were slaughtered because white European settlers wanted the land? What the hell do you call that, Nikki Haley? Press play. I think that it was meant to be this amazing experiment to see if we could have freedom and democracy in a way that all men are created equal. But if you didn't we look at are all not men, there yet. But if you didn't look at all men as equal. Stop. Nikki, you act like people just, oh my goodness, we're just going to up and we're just going to pack up and just set sails for the United States of America. Mm. Mm -mm. It's not what happened. That's not what happened. In, in fact, um, there's a video uh, on social media where uh, anti-racist educator Tim Wise sort of talked about that. Uh, watch this. I'm just being honest. Like when Donald Trump says Mexico's not sending their best. Okay, you think England sent their best? <laughs> Like, like, <laughs> y'all like that. Look, the people, uh, people say, my family came over on the Mayflower. All right, shh. <laughs> Why are you bragging, Buttercup? That is not, I don't know who was on the Mayflower, but I know who wasn't, the king. The king was not on the Mayflower. <laughs> Nobody the king wanted to keep around was on the Mayflower. But we have this fictional narrative. It's almost like we believe sometime around 1642, there was a British father somewhere in England that got his family together around the fireplace in the morning and said, all right, um, here's the thing. I know we're doing pretty well. Like we got this big castle, we got all this gold. I know it's brilliant, right? It's fantastic. We were at the King's Palace last week. Kids, you remember you played with his children out in the garden. Wasn't that great? Yeah, I know it was amazing, wasn't it? It was great. Listen, that's all fine and good, but daddy has an idea. My idea is as follows. Keep up, please. Keep up. Um, gather all your things. Not all of your things. We have a lot of things because we're doing really well. We're rich. We're powerful. Just gather up like a basket full of stuff and we are going to get on a big boat. And by that, I mean a rickety old ship. Like, I don't even know if it's seaworthy. Like, it might sink. We might drown, get eaten by sharks, get robbed by pirates, get scurvy, die a horrible, miserable death on the open ocean. However, and this is the important part, it will be an adventure. So what do you say? That didn't happen, right? The winners didn't get on the boat. The winners had no reason to leave. And you know what? There's no shame in that. There's no shame at all in having been the losers. In fact, let me tell you something. There's something quite... See, those are facts, but... What Nikki Haley is describing on The Breakfast Club is this fictional story that we have been sold. Oh, it was about freedom, which is no different than the story of Texas independence. Oh, the Alamo, they were fighting for freedom and equality. No, they were fighting to protect slavery because Mexico was outlawing it. And this is why they want to ban books. This is why they want to get rid of DEI. It's because they don't want the next generation of white kids to know the actual truth about this country. Press play. The ideology is flawed. But why do you want kids to hear that they live in a racist country? Why can't you tell kids, look, we're not perfect and we have some more things to fix? I just, I don't want any child to think like that. I don't want any child to believe that they're disadvantaged from the second they're born. I didn't want to feel that. I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think if you tell it somebody- It is though. I think if you tell somebody it's cold outside, you just, 
that just makes them put on a coat. No, it makes them it makes them know what it's going to feel like before they even get outside. I don't mm-hmm. want kids to feel that. I want them to get outside with confidence and strength and know that they can be anything. We have to do that. But they got to know the truth too. You yeah, know, they have to get around the truth. You know, truth. like I have two two black sons, and they have to understand what they're facing when they go out to this world. It's not going to be the same as. Let's say my neighbor or a classmate. It's going to be the same. And the, the same truth thing didn't with stop you. you. And yeah. same thing with you. If you, the you truth have did brothers, not stop and, you. and let's say your brothers wore the same thing that your dad wore, they weren't going to have the same lifestyle, and they were going to be looked at differently than your other classmates. Look, it's the truth. There was a we miss Bamberg pageant that everybody would put their children in. It was the big thing in Bamberg. You always put your kids in. So my mom decided to put me and my sister in this pageant. And I was disqualified because they had a black queen and they had a white queen. And they said they didn't know where to put me because if I was in the black category, the blacks would be mad. If I was in the white category, the whites would be mad. So they gave me a beach ball and sent me on my way. Mm -hmm. A beach ball? Yeah, I know. That's all I got, right? (laughs) Only after my mom said, will you at least let her sing her song? You're never going to believe it. My song was, this land is your land. This land is my land. I mean, it doesn't get any worse (laughs) than that. Listen, did my parents sit down and say... To us, what happened here was wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. But did they say this is the way the country is? No. My mom said, you get up, you show that this is we're going to make it better tomorrow. I just it's my mentality that I want everybody to know we all have a job to do, and that's to fix this country. And we never stop. See, this is why this is bullshit. So my parents told us why it happened. Oh, you mean the same parents who were told when they bought the home, uh, you can't invite any black people over. And when you sell your home, you must sell it back to the person you bought it from. See, this is the nonsense. And see, Nikki Haley has an advantage. Because Nikki Haley's advantage is that she's a light skinned Indian American. Nikki Hay don't look like Bobby Jindal. Now, Bobby Jindal, American Indian Republican, former governor of Louisiana, but Bobby Jindal dark skinned. So when Nikki was like, well, you know, we didn't really fit in the other category, oh, Nikki, you can pass for white. Yes, you can. You can pass for white. But see, you didn't fit in either category. Well, the black people would have been mad, and the white people would have been mad. But Nikki, right there, it speaks about racism. And if you are a black parent, you are committing parental genocide if you do not tell your black children how they better act when they get stopped by the cops. See, Nikki's like, oh no, just things are gonna get better. I just want our kids, let's have them experience life. Are you crazy? If a black kid watches a white kid show their ass, when the cops pull him over, that black kid knows I cannot do what they just did. Cause the white kid is gonna go home. The black kid will go home too, likely in a body bag. This is called reality. See, If I'm sitting there asking her the question, okay, Nikki, explain to me then why black families today, grown people, have to take the black artwork and the black photos and the black books down when they get their houses appraised because the white appraiser may appraise it for less. So y'all see the game? I want y'all to listen. See how she said, well, I want to tell children. I'm not talking children right now. I want Nikki Haley to answer this. Nikki, what about the black woman with multiple degrees who applied for a job uh, with the Veterans Administration in Virginia, eminently qualified, but when she left the interview, the white folks opted not to give her the job because they did not like her hairstyle. And she sued. And she won. And they had to pay her lost wages But she had to sue in order to get that. It has nothing to do with her degrees. It was because of her hairstyle. See, Nikki don't want to talk about that. See, y'all, see, it's real simple to say, 
well, I just want kids to, to not have to, and we're going to get better, and things are going to get better. Nikki, who the hell you think you're talking to? Every damn black parent since 1619 has said that. The black existence is built upon baby tomorrow is going to be better. Black people, people of African descent were enslaved, not knowing when we were going to be free. 248 years until official slavery ended. And we still caught hell during Jim Crow. And then 92 years. So baby, ain't no, there's no group of people who has been more optimistic about the future of America than black people. 2009, survey was taken. The question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America for your children? Who had the most optimism? Black people. Every minority group, majority of them were optimistic. Only one group in America was less than the majority, white people. September 2016, a survey was taken. The question was asked, are you optimistic about the future of America economically for the next 10 years? Black people, lowest wealth, highest optimism. Latinos, second lowest wealth, second highest optimism. White people, highest wealth, lowest optimism. Nikki, black people, we are always optimistic. We've always been America's glass is half full, even when America gave us a glass filled with mud and water. Press play. You want something done right? You gotta do it yourself. <coughs> I tried so hard and got so far.